welcome again to today's lesson uh, thank you very much we continue to simplify chemistry today we want to simplify a topic uh, in form 2 introduction to salts we want to make it as simple as we have been saying and my name is simple teacher so we start by defining what a salt is a salt is an ionic compound formed when a cation from a base combines with an anion from an acid. They can also be formed by having a hydrogen, uh, a hydrogen in the acid displaced by a metallic or ammonium ion. This uh, uh, metallic or ammonium ion can be direct metal or it can come from a base that's why we are saying it is an ionic compound formed when a cation from a base combines with a, an anion from an acid or uh, we can say it is an ionic compound formed when hydrogen of an acid is displaced by a metallic uh, or ammonium ion the number of replaceable hydrogen ions in an acid is uh, referred to its basicity so the different uh, acids have different basicities. Now let us look at a monobasic acid. This is an acid that has only one replaceable hydrogen. Like hydro hydrochloric acid, there is only one H, and uh, nitric acid, there is only one H. So those are monobasic acids. They are dibasic acids, those ones that have two hydrogens to be replaced. Like you can see in um, uh, sulfuric acid, you have two hydrogens and uh, this is a diabasic acid there are also tribasic acids those ones that have uh, uh, three three replaceable hydrogens like the the phosphoric acid that uh, is uh, stated here as an example now let us look at types of store salts there is what we call the normal salts. These are salts where uh, all ionizable hydrogens uh, in the acid have been replaced. An example is sodium chloride. As you can see here, we don't have any hydrogen. So all hydrogen has been replaced and therefore these are normal salt. The same for potassium sulfate and also for sodium nitrate. Uh, there are those acids that we say they are acidic, acidic salts this here it's only uh, uh, the hydrogen the place of hydrogen has only been replaced partially so part of ionosable hydrogen has been replaced an example is sodium hydrogen carbonate as you can see there is some hydrogen in the in the salt that means that not all hydrogen has been replaced there are those salts we say they are double salts these are salts that contain two different cations or anions so it is not only one form of cation uh, there could be more than uh, one cation and also uh, there could be salts with uh, more than one anion an example is thrown there's also hygroscopic salts these are salts that absorb water from atmosphere but uh, they do not form a solution an example is anhydrous copper sulfate there is also deliquescent salts. These are salts that absorb water from the atmosphere to form solutions. An example is calcium chloride and sodium hydroxide. There are anhydrous salts. These are salts that do not contain water of crystallization, while hydrated salts are those that contain water of crystallization. So enough with the definitions. Now let us look at a very uh, important aspect in this topic, the aspect of solubility of salts. We need to know which salts are soluble and which salts are not soluble. So in a summary, I've put uh, the solubility aspect uh, within a table. And uh, one point is that all nitrates are soluble. All nitrates are soluble. All hydrogen carbonates are soluble all phosphates are soluble all sulfates are soluble except three which are barium sulfate calcium sulfate and lead sulfate barium sulfate calcium sulfate and lead sulfate 
all chlorides are also soluble except silver and lead chlorides. Now in terms of carbonates, it's only ammonium, sodium and potassium carbonates that are soluble. All other carbonates are insoluble. Please have this information in, uh, cap well captured and have put it uh, as simple as possible in this summary table. Now let us look at preparation of salts. The reason why we are looking at the solubility is because solubility determines the method used to prepare salts. So we first look at uh, preparation of soluble salts. There are five ways through which uh, soluble salts can be prepared. One is direct di displacement. What happens here is that a metal is reacted with an acid. When a metal is reacted with an acid, as we said, salts are only compound formed when uh, a hydrogen in an acid is replaced by a metal or ammonium ion. So here, when a metal is reacted with an acid, what happens is that the hydrogen in the acid is displaced by the metal. So what happens, a salt and hydrogen gas are produced and uh, excess metal is always used, should always be used to ensure that all acid is used up. When bubbling stops, that is when hydrogen stops being produced, that means that the reaction is complete. Excess metal is then filtered, filtrate is heated and allowed to crystallize, and it is then washed with distilled water and dried between filter papers. Examples of salts that can be produced through this method is magnesium sulfate when a uh, reaction takes place between magnesium metal and sulfuric acid as you can see in this in this uh, reaction so the same can uh, happen for calcium nitrate when uh, calcium metal is reacted with uh, nitric acid that is one method the next method is reaction of insoluble base that is oxides with an acid in this case, a salt and water are formed. Excess base is filtered. Filtrate is heated, allowed to crystallize, washed with distilled water, and then dried between filter papers. An example of a salt that can be prepared through this method is lead nitrate, where lead oxide is reacted with nitric acid, or even uh, magnesium chloride, when uh, magnesium oxide is reacted with hydrochloric acid acid. So the third method through which soluble salts can be uh, prepared is a reaction of uh, a carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate with acid, with an acid. So it doesn't matter whether the carbonate uh, is soluble or insoluble, it's about reacting a carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate uh, with an acid. So in this process, a salt, water and carbon four oxide are normally formed. When bubbling stops, the reaction is complete. That's how you notice that the reaction is complete. This bubbling of uh, ca carbon four oxides. So excess insoluble carbonate is filtered out. Then the filtrate is heated, allowed to crystallize, washed with distilled water, and then dried between filter papers. Examples of salts that are prepared through this method is uh, copper sulfate where copper carbonate is reacted with uh, sulfuric acid or even uh, potassium chloride where uh, potassium carbonate is reacted with uh, hydrochloric acid. The fourth method is what we call neutralization where rea the reaction happens between a soluble base and dilute acid. In this process, a salt and water are formed uh, there is always an indicator included in the reaction so that uh, when the color changes uh, we are able to notice to know that all the acid has been used up. The resulting solution is heated, allowed to crystallize, washed with distilled water and then dried between filter papers. Example of salts that can be prepared through this method are uh, sodium nitrate which uh, can be prepared by reacting sodium hydroxide with nitric acid. Remember, uh, hydroxides are common in the soluble basis. 
So another one that can be prepared through this method is uh, ammonium sulfate that can be prepared when ammonium hydroxide is reacted with uh, sulfuric acid. The fifth and final me method through which uh, soluble salts can be prepared is uh, by burning of a metal in a jar containing a non-metal. Uh, this is called direct synthesis. In this process, a salt is formed. An example is sodium chloride, where you burn sodium in a jar containing chlorine gas. Now we look at the preparation of insoluble salts. And one and most popular method is a reaction between two soluble salts to form one soluble and another insoluble salt. This method is called double decomposition. In this method, uh, if the insoluble salt is normally filtered, uh, the f formed salt is uh, insoluble is filtered, and then uh, uh, the residue washed with the distilled water and dried between filter papers. Uh, examples of uh, salts that can be prepared through this method is uh, copper carbonate that can be prepared from a reaction between copper sulfate and uh, sodium carbonate. Another one is uh, barium sulfate that can be prepared from the reaction between uh, barium chloride and uh, potassium sulfate. So that is it uh, in regards to preparation of salts. Let us now look at the effect of heat on salts. You can start with carbonates and uh, one important thing to note is that sodium and potassium carbonates do not decompose on heating. And uh, the carbonates of magnesium, lead, calcium, and copper decompose to, to form oxides of the respective metals and carbon for oxide gas. As you can see here, an example I'm using is copper carbonate, where it is decomposing on heating to form copper oxide, which is black, and uh, carbon for oxide gas. In terms of hydrogen carbonates, the sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium hydrogen carbonates are the ones that decompose to give corresponding carbonates and form water and carbon for oxide. An example is calcium hydrogen carbonate that I'm um, giving here is an example which decomposes to calcium carbonate, water, and carbon for oxide. In terms of nitrates, they exhibit different behaviors. Uh, for potassium and sodium nitrates, uh, they, decom they decompose to form sodium and potassium nitrites respectively and produce oxygen gas. As you can see as an example here, the potassium nitrate after heating decomposes to form uh, potassium nitrate and oxygen gas. For calcium, magnesium, iron, reed, uh, zinc, aluminium and copper uh, nitrates, they decompose to form metal oxide and a mixture of brown nitrogen for oxide and oxygen gases. For example, is lead uh, nitrate that decomposes to form a lead oxide and uh, uh, the, the nitrogen for oxide and oxygen gas. In terms of um, Silver and mercury nitrates themselves, they decompose to f respective metals and a mixture of brown nitrogen for oxide and oxygen gas are formed. For example, the silver nitrate will decompose to silver metal, the nitrogen for oxide and oxygen gas. What about chlorides? Chlorides, are, uh, they have very high melting and boiling points, m almost all of them actually accept ammonium chloride so they never are affected by laboratory heating so for ammonium chloride it is sublimes into ammonia and hydrogen chloride on heating now we look at sulfates it's only iron 3 iron 2 and copper 2 sulfates that decompose on heating to form oxides of the respective metals and acidic sulfur for oxide or sulfur trioxide an example is copper sulfate, which on heating produces copper oxide, which is black, and sulfur trioxide, as you can see in this example. So, so, th so that's all on um, on salts. 
it's a, a simple s topic we have simplified it we have summarized the notes and uh, I i'm confident now that uh, it will be possible even to tackle any questions that come from this topic in kcse or in any other exam an example of questions that have come in the kcse in 2021 paper one there was a question about uh, describing how pure sample of copper two nitrate can be prepared using recycled copper wire so look at these questions uh, 2020 paper one there was about sorts may be classified as soluble and soluble select from the following list a pair of compounds that can be used to prepare a soluble and an insoluble salt just as we have learned today we can also be told to describe how a soluble salt is obtained from its solution uh, which is something we have gone through in most of the uh, preparation methods so that was in 2020 in 2019 there was a question about starting with copper tannings describe how a sample of copper two sulfate crystals can be prepared in laboratory there was also a question in 2018 about uh, you being provided with solid potassium uh, hydrogen carbonate and you are told to describe how a solid sample of potassium nitrate can be prepared look at those questions we will be able to look at them later at the opportune time thank you very much let us meet again next time in another topic